Hey. <laughs> um, welcome to Play Under Review. I am your host, BAce513. And if you remember in the last video I dropped, I said that I was going to talk about Warren Moon for this video. Warren Moon is a retired professional NFL player whose position was quarterback. And he played quarterback for 23 professional seasons. He did not play wide receiver. He did not play running back. He played quarterback. And you are going to find out what that snide, snide remark is for later on um, in this video. I was really, just to be a little serious for a second. I was really nervous about wanting to do this um, particular individual. Uh, I got to researching him more. Um, and like I said, I, I'm a, you know, football head. So I know a little tidbits about different, you know, players and whatnot, but, you know, I'm doing a hard dive into his career and this man's career was amazing. Um, so what I'm actually going to do for this, uh, professional, uh, football player is I'm going to split, uh, this video into a part one and two. So this is part one where I'm going to talk about his st statistics and part two, uh, dive deeper into the different things that he had to overcome. So like I said, Warren Moon is a retired quarterback, a retired Hall of Fame quarterback who um, played primarily for uh, the, I'm not sh sure if anybody's familiar with his name, but he played primarily with the Edmonton Eskimos and the Houston Oilers. Now, the Edmonton Eskimos is a CFL team, and the CFL is known as the Canadian Football League. Now, what had happened with him was draft night, I believe it was 1978, he went undrafted um, by the NFL. Nobody wanted to draft him. Um, you know, they was like, hey, why don't you play this position, this position, not quarterback? And he was like, no, I want a quarterback. So he didn't get drafted. And he ended up taking his talents to the Canadian Football League, CFL. The first six years of his professional career, because the CFL is a professional um, is a professional league. So that man got paid when he was there. But the CFL, he played for six seasons with the Edmonton Eskimos. Um, while he was there. And then after those six seasons, I believe in 1984, he signed with the Houston Oilers in the NFL. Because at that time, there was, you know, a bidding war for his services after the crazy year he had with the CFL. So he ended up signing with the Houston Oilers. FYI, the Houston Oilers are now the Tennessee Titans. Um, just just to, to let you know, the Houston Oilers are not the Houston Texans. Houston Oilers and now the Tennessee Titans. Most of his career was spent with the Edmonton Eskimos, the Houston Oilers, but he also has stints with the Seattle Seahawks, the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Minnesota Vikings. So, you know, he had a pretty ex extensive NFL career slash CFL career. So when he was with the CFL, this man obtained five great cup championships now you're probably wondering you're like why is he so hype about the five great cup championships the reason why i'm hype about this is because the great cup is the equivalent of the nfl super bowl so what i'm trying to get you to understand is when he was in the cfl his team won five Grey Cup championships, the equivalent of the NFL Super Bowl. This man got five. And two of those was, he was the um, Grey Cup MVP. It was 1980 and 1982. And um, I believe the Grey Cup championships were like from 1978 to 1982. They were straight. Back to back to back to back to back. His team, his whole team is like, I'm not even going to like, you know, put it all on him. I'm just going to include him in it. But his whole team, including him, they were a bad mother, shut your mouth. All right. So 
um, you know, he has a lot of accolades with the CFL. He was the Grey Cup most outstanding offensive player in 1980. He was the Grey Cup's most outstanding player in 1982. He was uh, the Western MVP in 1983. In his division, um, like with the team that he was on, the Edmonton Eskimos, they were in like the Western division. So he ended up becoming the Western MVP. Um, he was a Western All-Star at the quarterback position as well. Um, he was CFL's most outstanding player in 1983. Um, and he got into the Canadian Hall of Fame. In the beginning of the video, I talked about how he was a Hall of Fame quarterback. Um, he was a Hall of Fame quarterback in the Canadian League and in the NFL. This man is bad. He um, has... Don't quote me on this, but I believe that I'm correct. But I believe that he may be the only guy who's in both Hall of Fames. Um, but I tell you what, one thing I do know is when it comes to the Hall of Fame, the NFL Hall of Fame, is he is the only black quarterback in the NFL. I should have asked you. <laughs> I should have asked you all. Who do y'all think? Um, how many people? You know, how many African Americans do you think is in the Hall of Fame for quarterback? He is the first and the only African American quarterback that's in the Hall of Fame at his position, and he was the first undrafted quarterback that got inducted into the Hall of Fame in the Canadian League. He got inducted in two thousand one, and he got. Um, inducted into the Edmonton Eskimos Wall of Honor. This man was a bad man. So that's just his CFL career. The NFL, he came to the NFL. Um, he didn't get a Super Bowl. I'm going to lead off. I'm going to lead with saying that he didn't get a Super Bowl. But that man was still bad. He was first team All Pro in 1990. He was second team All Pro according to Associated Press. Um, it's, you know, different outlets or different top newspapers at the time and whatnot. But, um, according to the Associated Press, he was second team all pro, which I'm like, sure, that's where you want to put him. Okay. It's actually interesting because when they were doing their vote for the NFL MVP in, I believe, 1990, um, they voted Joe Montana for the NFL MVP. And what I really didn't realize was, uh, how... Ridiculous, Joe. Um, excuse me. How ridiculous Warren Moon's numbers was compared to Joe Montana in those times, and it's like his numbers. He stacked right up with them, with the greats at that time. It kind of confirmed my thinking of well, why isn't you know he being being considered for um, NFL MVP for that year, where there was a different outlet, the News Enterprise Association, who made him their MVP for that season. At this point, I just thought it was interesting because um, you, you hear about Joe Montana getting talked about um, in like that year, you know, he has the accolades and whatnot. And it's just like, it's, it's just amazing the some of the things that I looked at and the numbers that he had. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna talk more about him. Uh, his numbers, I'm probably gonna talk a little bit more about in part two. We'll see. But um, he was had an amazing career. He was the NFL Offensive Player of the Year in 1990, um, and you know that that was the same year that Joe Montana won the MVP. So that tells you that he was doing a little something something in that year. Um, he was the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year in 1989. He was an NFL uh, Pro Bowler, nine-time Pro Bowler. This man was a nine-time Pro Bowler, okay? Nine. Not one, not two, not five. He was a nine-time Pro Bowler. And then in one of those years, maybe in 1989, but in one of those years, he was the Pro Bowl MVP. I'm sorry. It was 1997. He was the Pro Bowl MVP. 97. That was, that was close to the 2000 generation, and he's he's still just this this man was freaking awesome. And like I said, Hall of Fame. Um, only black quarterback in the Hall of Fame. Only um, uh, not only the first undrafted quarterback in the Hall of Fame. Warren Moon 
was that guy. It's just amazing when I hear in the past about different quarterbacks um, that grace the stage of the NFL. And it's just like, you know, when I hear about some of these quarterbacks, I don't, I mean, I hear about Warren Moon, but I see here about some of these other quarterbacks up here, and it just feels like I hear Warren Moon down here. Um, so it, you can see that's that's one of the reasons why I was so nervous. I really want to show to the best of my abilities. I'm getting better at this, but it's just to just being transparent with my um with my subscribers. Like I really want to show that this man was a monster. Um, and I look forward to talking more about him in part two. And I look forward to y'all um, taking this journey with me. So, hey, I'll see y'all next week. Take it easy.